so you have downloaded the notepad and want to know how to work with it. First, you will need a free program called Blender 3D. If you haven't downloaded it yet, you can follow this link and download the latest version of the program. Now you need to open the project file here. It can be done by dragging the file into the 3D window or by clicking file and then open. After opening the file, you get into a fully animated default project. It is the same animation that is in the promo videos. Most likely you want to remove all unnecessary animation. It is done simply. In the 3D window, you need to press the key A and all elements will be highlighted in orange color. In the playback window, all the animation keys will appear. To delete them, move the mouse to the playback window and press A, then X, delete keyframes and all of the keys will be erased. To remove the selection, in the 3D window press the key A twice, or use the key combination Alt and A. Now you have a clean project to work with. Let's inspect the structure of the rig. The rig is represented as sliders. Each slider is responsible for a different zone of the book. Let's start in order. Press key N to open the sidebar to make it easier to work with the position of the sliders. Opening and closing of the book is made by a round slider with a diamond in the center. By moving this slider you can open and close the whole book. The zone of movement of this slider is from minus 1 to 1 unit. Minus 1 is the book closed, 0 is the book fully open, and 1 is the book closed again. To select the slider click on it with the right or left mouse button. It will glow orange, then press the G key and move the mouse, and the book will open and close, and notice that the pages follow the position of the cover. So you can animate the pages of a book that is not fully open. The next slider is one of the most important. It is shown as a square inscribed in a circle. This slider is responsible for the overall animation of the pages. This slider has a movement zone ranging from 0 to 1 unit, where at 0 any page will not flip. The value of 0 0.49 and 95 makes the pages to be completely turned over and 0 0.99 and 95 makes pages to be closed. Please pay close attention to the fact that I am not using exactly 0.5 or 1. In this case, the values should not be whole number. The last set of sliders are sliders for rotating each page separately. These sliders have a range of movement from 0 to 0.5. These sliders depend on the main page rotator. The page rotator looks like a square inscribed in a circle. For example, now I have the notebook open on page 8. As you can see all sliders up to the 8th page are in position of 0.5, so the main rotating slider turns 8 pages at once and opens the book on the desired page. The last one is the overall controller of the whole book. It allows you to position the book where you want it to go. Now let's move on to create the handwriting on the pages. To rotate and move the viewport, Blender has buttons in the topmost corner to help you navigate. Multicolored X, Y, and Z allow you to center the screen on the axis. You are interested in the Z axis as it is the axis that will rotate the viewport over the pages of the book. There are also pan and zoom tools. They are depicted as a hand and magnifying glass to center the viewport on the text. You should only write on a fully open page. Make sure that the slider of the page you want is in position 0. On each page there is a vector layer. It is already set up for handwriting, but this layer is hidden on all pages except for the 8th page. To create your own text, select default text. It should be highlighted with an orange outline, and then you need to open the edit mode. To do this, go to the bottom of the 3D screen there is a drop-down menu with the word object mode. Click on it, and choose edit mode. Now you are in vector editing mode. To delete the default text, press the key A, and the text should appear orange, and then press delete. Choose vertices in the drop-down menu and the default text should disappear. Likely, you have not selected the right tool for writing text, for touch you need to call the side menu. To do this press the T key, 
In the side menu you must select the option draw. You need to go to the tool settings menu. You can find it in another side menu. Press key N and go under the tool tab. Find the area signed as depth and select surface. If this button is not already activated, the activated button is lit blue. Also, activate the only first option and under plane specify tangent to surface. This option works only on a flat sheet of paper. If you want the thickness of the line to depend on the pressure of the graphics tablet pen, then activate the use pressure option, but I would recommend writing text with the same thickness. Now you can write on your page. If you have a graphics tablet, the result will be even better. Now you have finished writing your text, but want to change its color, it is very easy to do. To do this you need to go to the properties menu, to the material tab, you will see a list of default materials with their settings. We are interested in the materials themselves, not their settings. Leave this menu open and move the mouse cursor back to the 3D window. Most likely you have now highlighted the last written text. You need to deselect it by pressing key, A, twice or using the combination, Alt, and A. Now that you have no more active selections, you can press the C button and a circle will appear around your cursor. A circle is the selection area. You can enlarge it with the mouse wheel. Press the left mouse button and move the cursor over the text whose color you want to change so that it is fully selected. If you are not sure of the quality of your selection, press Ctrl plus L then Blender itself will find linked areas. When your desired text is highlighted, go back to the material menu. Select the material you want to apply to the highlighted text. For example, green. Click on it and press Assign. If done correctly, the selected text will become the selected color. If you want to change the default color of the pen, you can select the desired color in the Material Selection menu and click on the up arrow until it is the first in the list and next text will be in new default color. You need to exit the Edit Mode, Use, Tab, or click on the Edit Mode button and select Object Mode. Now go to the Modifier Settings menu. The button of this menu looks like a blue wrench, and you will find a modifier text on page. It has a setting for page animation in the animation start and animation length items. By default, there is a configured animation for the text and it works for 100 frames. It means that for 100 frames your text will go from invisible to fully visible. And the animation starts from zero frame. Right now you can already start rendering but the animation is probably very fast. Let's set the animation to run for five seconds for your page. The base frame rate of your document is 24 frames per second, so in one second the blender will play 24 frames. To make the animation run for five seconds you need to multiply 24 by five to get 120 frames. Camera setup and render settings. All this time you have the camera in the basic position, if you want to use a different camera position, you can adjust its position manually. To do this you need to activate camera view mode. This is done either by shortcut number 0 on the number pad or you can press the button with the image of cameras located in the upper corner of your 3D viewport. To link the camera to your viewport you need to go to the side menu of the viewport. If you have closed it, it is called by pressing the N key. In the view section navigate to the view lock drop down menu go to the camera to view checkbox click on it and the camera in the viewport will be framed by an orange dotted line this means that your camera follows your viewport unfortunately you will no longer be able to use the buttons in the viewport to center your view as they temporarily disconnect the viewport from the cameras if you accidentally exit you can return to the camera by clicking on the corresponding button now all camera manipulations are only possible via the mouse wheel and the keyboard shortcuts. Here are the important keyboard shortcuts for you. Zooming is done by scrolling a mouse wheel. To move the camera press shift and the middle mouse button. To achieve slow and precise zoom use, control and press the middle mouse button. To rotate around the center point press and hold the middle mouse button. It's actually a very comfortable control, but it takes some practice. Bonus tip since you are moving a real object, 
you can press Ctrl plus C to undo the operation and the camera will return to the previous state. Once you have the camera in the position you want, be sure to unhook it from the viewport by clicking camera to view again to avoid unexpected camera moves. So, everything is ready for rendering. Let's start rendering. As you may have noticed, there are a lot of different settings in Blender. I will explain the most important in your case. Now your animation is 120 frames. But if you start rendering now, you will render 220 frames. Because this is the default number of frames in the Blender interface, and we need to change it. To do this, go to the Render Settings menu. This menu looks like a printer that prints a picture of a mountain. Here you will see the menu called Frame Range. It sets the number of frames of the scene animation. Write 120 here instead of 220, and the light gray area in the center of the screen will become smaller. This will mean that you created everything correctly. In the same menu, you may be interested in the Format Settings, which is a tab for setting the resolution of the output image. Now you have 1920 by 1080 you can render in 4K resolution. Not to bother with the numbers, you can specify not 100%, but 200% and Blender itself will multiply the resolution by 2. I will leave everything as it is. The most important parameters will be in the output drop-down menu, which is located below. It is where you configure your render files and the place where the render will take place. In the dark gray field and the icon of a folder you need to specify the location where to save your files. You can enter it manually or you can click on the folder and tell Blender where to save your files. By default, Blender will save them to the temp folder of your computer. You can save a frame-by-frame -frame animation or a finished video. All possible options will be found in the drop-down menu near file format, but I recommend using PNG as it is the easiest format to use. By default, color depth is 16-bit. I recommend leaving 16-bit. Render files will be much larger than 8-bit, but after rendering you will be available more qualitative post-processing in the program of your choice. By the way, Blender has decent quality video and photo processing features built in, but you can find information about it online. Everything is ready for text rendering. You can find the render button at the very top of the program. It is located next to the edit and file buttons. Click on it to select render animation or you can press Ctrl plus 12 and the render will start automatically. But wait, don't go away. What about page animations? Let's make a simple loop animation so that you understand the whole principle of working with the notebook asset. First of all, Let's tell Blender the position where your text animation finishes playing. I remind you that we specified 120 frames. So let's check that the animation playback menu is at 120 frames. For this purpose in the very bottom part of the program you will see a long timeline bar. Its icon looks like a clock and next to it, it says playback. There is a number in a blue frame that indicates the active animation frame. We need to drag it to 120. Now we have only the text animation set up. Let's turn the page right after it is filled with text. To do this, move the camera away so that you have access to the page turn sliders. Just scroll the mouse wheel. As you remember now the book is open on the 8th page. So we need the first slider which is not moved. To select the slider click on it with the right or left button. You must select only the desired slider. There should be only one orange outlined object on the scene. Now that you have selected the slider, you can go to the side menu to the transform tab. It is the same side menu which is called by an N key. There in the item menu we are interested in the transform location X. Now the most important thing, assigning the animation keys. Hover the mouse over X and press the I key and this slider will be colored in yellow. Or you can right click on the slider X and click insert single keyframe. At this moment we started the animation. You may have noticed that there are two yellow rhombuses under the blue bar. These are the keys of the animation. Now move the blue slider to the number 160. This will be the end of the page flip animation. Your slider should still be selected. If not, select it again and go to the side menu to the item location transform tab. As you notice the X has turned green from yellow. 
This means you are now out of the animation key and can assign a new one. Click on the X and you will be allowed to enter a value. I remind you that the page flip sliders have a range of values up to 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is the value of a fully closed page. Enter 0 0.5, press enter and the slider will turn orange. Right click and choose. Insert single keyframe. The slider should turn yellow this means you have done everything correctly and your animation is active. You may notice that now the active frame is in the dark zone of the timeline. Since we have increased the length of the animation, it should also be increased in the render settings menu. Otherwise, this animation will simply not be rendered. Go to the output menu. In the frame range tab you need to write a new timeline end and give it a value of 160. Because this is the end of our animation. I was thinking that you would probably want to render your animation right away without worrying about building it anywhere else. Let's specify AVI JPEG format instead of PNG in the output tab. Make sure RGB is selected for color and quality determines the size of your file. Let's start rendering. Wait until the rendering is finished. Don't close the render window until it is finished. And there it is, your masterpiece. Congratulations, you have passed the introductory course in Notepad Asset. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Happy blending!